We're now going to relate integrals of vector fields over curves to integrals of vector fields over surfaces. So let S be an oriented surface with boundary curve C. Now the orientation of S determines an orientation of C as follows. So if here's the curve C and here's the surface S, if C is oriented as, as shown, then the orientation of S <coughs> should be given by a unit normal vector pointing up. Another way to say this is that if you imagine a little person walking along the edge of the surface, then the person's head should be pointing up with respect to the normal vector n. And then as you walk along the curve C, the surface should be to your left. And if you step to the right, you'll fall off the edge of the surface. So we say that C is positively oriented if it is oriented as shown. So this depends on the orientation of the surface. Um, if you switch the orientation of sur the surface, you have to switch the orientation of C also. Okay, we can now state Stokes' theorem, and be careful about how to spell it. So it's named after the mathematician Stokes, who had an S at the end of his name. So there's an apostrophe which goes after the S. Some people also put another S after the apostrophe. That's a little bit debatable. Anyway, this is Stokes' theorem. So let S and C be as above. Let F be a differentiable vector field. Defined on S. Then the integral over C of f dot dr is equal to the double integral over S of the curl of f, or del cross f, dot ds. That's the, that's the statement. Now this, is, this is really marvelous, because on the left side I have the integral of f around the curve, and on the right-hand side, I have the integral of something involving the derivatives of f on this whole surface. The sort of physical interpretation of this, if, if you imagine that f is the velocity vector of a fluid, well, then the left-hand side here, this is the circulation of f around the curve C. Note, by the way, that C is closed, that the boundary curve of a surface is always closed. Um, and the curl, well, this measures rotation of F. So it's a vector which points in the direction which is an axis around which F is rotating in some sense. Now, when we integrate over the surface, because we're in this integral, we're taking the curl dot, the normal vector, to the surface So when you, so we're only taking the um, component of the curl that's perpendicular to the surface. So that's sort of measuring rotation, which is tangential to the surface, because then the axis of rotation is perpendicular to the surface. So what this formula says is if you take this sort of rotation, which is tangential to the surface, and integrate it over the whole surface, then you get the net rotation around the boundary, or circulation around the boundary of the surface. So that's, that's the intuition. And so note, by the way, that in general, the boundary of a surface may consist of several curves. So if the boundary of F, boundary of S, has several curves, then Stokes' theorem is true.
where on the left hand side, LHS stands for left hand side, you add up the integrals over all of the boundary curves. Um, another thing which I should have said long ago is we're assuming the surface is bounded, in other words, that it doesn't go off to infinity. So whenever we talk about integrals over curves or surfaces, we always have to assume that these curves and surfaces don't go off to infinity. That will make sure that the integrals converge. Okay, so that's the, that's the statement of Stokes' theorem, and in the next lecture segment, we'll look at a couple of basic examples.